in my opinion, you're either born a front person or you're not. At that time, I was living in a different house, and I remember you came by the studio. As soon as you came in, I started showing you stuff, and we were mm -hmm. making music. It was more having kind of an open musical mm -hmm. dialogue right from the first meeting. I like the fact that you, you had a very strong opinion about music coming out today, but also past music. You basically liked five things in the world. <laughs> I, love, I love that kind of mind, having this desire for, um, not perfection, but um, this high expectation for music to be the best it can be. I sent you an email, um, I explained that I was working on this record, that me and Johnny had been writing, and that we were uh, at that stage where we were looking for people outside of our duo and collaborate. You were the first person on the list. <laughs> so the, your reply was a list of questions. What do you expect to do with this record? What do you want to say with this? Where do you put this record in the music landscape? It was just starting a a conversation already beyond music, which I think is what um, a, a good producer does. In my opinion, you're either born a front person or you're not. I think you can get better as a front person, but I think it's a God given gift as to whether you are or not. Like going back to that show, the first time I saw you play, it was an authentic performance. I mean, there was no question. It didn't feel like you were pretending to be, which you can, can tell. You can, you can tell mm -hmm. whether somebody's in the moment and in, in, their, in, their, in themselves. There was no cynicism. And, and yeah. I thought it was, you know, it was exciting to see that at that time and then fast forward to this album, I think, again, it's an authentic expression of who you are and, and what you're trying to say. I used to be a human being. Before you even started working on the music, I think you, we spent about six to nine months talking. My role in, in this, in my opinion, is just to bring your vision to life, where I, I can sometimes get carried away and start making my own record. <laughs> That's why I, you know, I, I don't no, work I on don't, a lot of stuff. I never felt that because yeah. because of the communication. It's, it was quite impressive, actually, the fact that we would talk so much before and then you went away and came back with exactly what you said you were going to do. Particularly the, the part in Los Angeles where you guys were here, because it felt like that was a musical conversation not just via email, like literally one could lay hands on an instrument. And I remember you playing mm. the chords to the middle of I'm a Man. I think also mm. finding the voice of what is the Jenny Beth record. I Am was the first song that I worked on. It's also the opening of your record. And I think it's a pretty stellar opening track. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Whatever way you want to look at it, the most important thing is the vocal and supporting the vocal. And you mm. need a, a delivery with conviction. And it felt like a piece that was came from your soul, as it were. So, I am naked all the time. I am burning inside. Um, I remember you saying, when you said to me, I'm going to record strings, but just so you know, they're going to be punk strings. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to bring the Hollywood <laughs> yeah. as well. No, I mean, I, I, I like with instrumentation the idea that, that you can hear someone playing. Like, the mm. big orchestral pad is nice within a certain context, but for this record, I don't think that would have been appropriate. I am naked all the time. I always mm. read the voice that opens and closes the record 
changed. As your voice, but your subconscious voice. It was Johnny's idea to have different voices. You know, again, this idea of the narrative into right. the record. So have different voices coming in and out. When he pitched down my voice, we realized that suddenly it was not a he, not a she. It was a it. It was. Yeah. So then suddenly it was free to say whatever it needed to say. And it feels to me like it was a statement but it's a statement that you can read a lot into. Like it's a very evocative, you know, whether you want to call it a poem, it's open to interpretation, I think. It's very open, yeah. I'm the man was like, got the bones of it. Mm. I liked it a lot. I kept everything that I thought to find what was your vision, but changed a lot within it as well. Mm. And I really thought it sounded great and then you said, I don't think we're putting a, I'm a man on the record. There and was I was like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I was also working with Flood on the other side of the pond on different tracks and having different conversations about this song, uh, which led to actually the intro of the next song on the record, which is The Rooms. Um, yeah, which sounds great. I'm a man. people in the streets reading the I'm the man text and because yeah. that was Flood's idea we need to hear other people saying this text and especially men so I'm the man was at some point off the record the version you had worked on but also you had a st we had a long conversation about the fact uh, about the subject of the song and the fact that you were saying it's necessary for you to say this you know it it needs to be said mm. and somehow when you're maybe a woman performer, I don't know. Sometimes you just want to get away from the conversation that people are expecting you to uh, bring on the table. I also think a woman saying, I'm a man, not a pussy, is a great <laughs> line. I um, certainly enjoy singing that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> By the time I got to human, I'd done I am, and, and I'd done I'm a man. And I am, to me, set certain kind of parameters mm -hmm. sonically. I followed throughout the record. Like, I think yeah. it's good to have an identity, particularly nowadays where, obviously, I don't work on a laptop, but anyone could record an album on, on a laptop. You can have every synth ever made, modeled, mm -hmm. every drum machine an orchestra. Too many choices don't lead to good music, in my opinion. Having the choices is nice, but then you've got to make your choices. Mm. You know, it's funny because it's supposed to be, I mean, we call it a solo record, right? And in a way, it's one of the most collaborative work I've ever done. And collaborating with you is for me a no-brainer in the sense of telling you, you know, carte blanche for the end, like do whatever you want to do because I know what I can't do, you know, I know my weakness, yeah, and, you know, same here. that's not something I can do. I think music song. is about communication and I think it's about trust. Being able to do the opening and the closing and the kind of middle aggressive song, it was a luxury job in that sense. The idea of starting with your subconscious and ending with the subconscious over a completely different chord structure. When the record opens, it feels darker. It's deliberately dissonant underneath it. When, when the record ends, it's almost like elated. It's things elated. Have made, have, we've been on a journey where things now make sense. You know, it starts more questioning and it ends more hopeful. Well, I think that's a great meta metaphor about the journey of making the record. <laughs> it starts with questions and yeah, and and with um, contentment.